We're going to do it, something that's been done for thousands of years. It actually comes from Luke chapter 24. It's a saying that Christians repeat. And it comes from when the women went to anoint the body of Jesus in the tomb, the day that he rose from the dead. And when they got there, they, they were mortified at first because his body was gone. The stone was rolled away. And an angel appeared to them and said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is risen. And so that same day, some men were walking from, from uh, um, Jerusalem to Emmaus, and Jesus came alongside them and walked the whole day with them, but they didn't know it was Jesus. The resurrected Jesus was beside them. He spent the day telling them about the prophecies of the resurrected Christ, and when he had dinner with them, he broke bread, and they realized they were in the presence of the risen Messiah. They ran back to Jerusalem, told the 11 disciples, He is risen indeed. And so that tradition began. So I say, He is risen, and you say, He is risen Let's do it again. Those of you at home, I want to see it on the, on the screen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And by the way, this is what we call a family service. That means we have the families, the parents, the children all together in this building. So it may be a little bit of distraction, some nervous energy, some whining, complaining, crying, bad smells. <laughs> and that's just from the adults. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't resist. But, you know, the truth is, a lot of people have come today, you, this may be your first time back, and, and I want to let you know what we've done here to preserve the integrity of protecting our flock, is we have the ability with our system to bring in new fresh air every 15 minutes. That's why you feel that breeze in here. So we've got state-of-the-art filters and massive amounts of air being blown in here, so every 15 minutes you have brand new exchange of air in this building. So I want you to feel comfortable and at peace, and I want to say thank you for coming. Some of you are here because it's Easter, some of you are here because it's Sunday, some of you are here because you've been dragged here by your parents or friends or co-workers. Trust me, you'll have a great time. God's going to meet you. You're going to feel better when you leave than when you came. So that's my promise to you, because I'm going to give you the promises not of a man, but the promises of the Son of God. And I'm not going to have to waste a lot of time trying to convince you of something you know already occurred. How many people here have actually been into space? Raise your hands. You've been literally in space. Okay. How many of you have seen, I know, not that you're spaced out. That's a different conversation. I won't ask, I won't ask that question. But how many of you have seen with your literal eyes in space that the world is truly round and moving? In space. You've been in space, darling. <laughs> Beautiful. She fit in the other category this morning. <laughs> you, 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 you literally in space. Not some video, but you saw it. Yet, do you still believe the earth is round? You're taking the testimony of other people, you're taking the testimony of a lot of information. And since Jesus rose from the dead, and, the, and all of the disciples were killed believing in him and refused, even while they were being tortured, to say that it was a lie, they know he rose from the dead. For 40 days after the resurrection, he showed himself to people. When he finally left, there were 500 gathered together when he descends into heaven, and then millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions have believed in Jesus Christ, and their lives have been changed. We don't need to have some kind of long sermon telling you that the millions and millions and millions and millions of people who believe in Jesus, whose lives have been changed, were wrong. Just as you don't need to go into space to see with your eyes the world is actually round to believe it. There's enough evidence to prove it. But today is about the fact that he gave you promises. And those promises are something you can actually hold on to because we know the world gives us promises they do not keep. People give us promises they do not keep. Jesus gives us promises we can live and die for. 
And the first promise he gives you through Jesus is we realize we are spiritual beings having a human experience. I want that to sink in. We are told that we are just evolved humans having these spiritual moments. That is completely reversed in Jesus. The resurrected Christ proves we are not human beings having spiritual moments. We are spiritual beings having spiritual beings having human experiences. We are living in this earth suit, as we call it. And we know as it gets older, it's less reliable. <laughs> and it will one day fail us. And it's important to realize that it's housing an eternal spiritual being. You are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. You are not an involved animal. Because the animal kingdom's not very friendly. Have you watched those TV shows? <laughs> the predator eats the prey. The young, the innocent, the old, they eat them. You know, I have a cat. I like my cat. <laughs> he catches mice. I live on a couple acres. He's a great cat. But I tell you, when my cat shows up in the morning and doesn't have a good night, he starts let, letting me know at the back door. He's hungry. And if my cat were bigger and he were hungry and I didn't feed him, he would eat me. <laughs> he wouldn't lose a moment's sleep. He'd pick his teeth and he'd go on. <laughs> that is, do you really want to live in that world? Is that the, the survival of the fittest? That's what it's like in the animal kingdom. But we are not part of the animal kingdom. We are part of an eternal kingdom. And Jesus came for you. You are spiritual beings having an earthly ex experience. Look at what Thomas happened to Thomas. When Jesus rose from the dead, he showed up. And Thomas, unfortunately, had missed. He must have slept in. He wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. And he showed himself. And so when the disciples said, hey, Jesus is alive, Jesus came, Thomas is like, you know what, unless I touch the holes in his hands and feel his side, I'm not going to believe in it. And so Jesus understands. Listen, there's nothing wrong. If you're here today struggling with your faith, no condemnation. Here is one of the great men of God who followed Jesus struggling with the resurrected Christ. Don't feel bad. You're in good company. Jesus gets it. And he wants to reveal himself to you. This is what happens in John 20, 26. It says, eight days later, eight days after the resurrection, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the door was locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it on my side with a spear. Pierce me. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. He realized the promise that Jesus had said that he would rise again after three days was real. He was a spiritual being able to show himself in the flesh because he was God in the flesh. He was not man connected to God. He was a God. He was the God, part of the eternal Godhead coming in the flesh. And he has created you the moment you were conceived. It wasn't just flesh and blood growing in your mama. God breathed life into you. You became an eternal being. And this is your temporary earth suit to get you through this life onto the next. And if you trust that and that promise of God, it will help you as you go through experiences of life. It says... In John 3, 5 through 6, Jesus answered, and he's saying this to Nicodemus, one of the great, uh, the great uh, Jewish leaders. And Nicodemus was struggling because in the, the Jewish law, there were thousands of them. And you had to obey thousands of law to be right with God. And Jesus was trying to get rid of the bondage to that. And he said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that was born of the Spirit, is spirit. He's saying, look, I know you were born. I know you came out of your mom. But there's also an eternal part of you. Don't confuse them. The eternal part is, e is eternal. It's forever. And so as we struggle with this life, if you think this is all you get, 
I could see how you'd be depressed. Because maybe you've had a bad life. Maybe you've had tremendous disappointments. Maybe your body has been racked with health issues. and You feel like, what a sucky life. Life is hard, then you die. That's no way for you to live. But if you are an eternal soul, this earth suit just gets you from point A to point B. And there are great joy and pleasures to have this earth suit. But it is not the end all be all. It's just a part of your existence. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. But Jesus also gave us other promises that happened because he rose from the dead like he said he would. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Okay, how do you become new? Do you cast off this body and you get a trade-in? You get to get a 50,000-mile checkup or a 100,000-mile checkup and you trade it in for a new one? He's talking about your soul, your spirit. There is a renewal that happens when we dare to follow Jesus. If you follow any man or any woman, you're, you're going to be disappointed. And those of you who are in relationships, you know, eventually one partner disappoints the other. It's life. It happens. But when you follow Jesus, he makes your spirit connected to the living God. God never disappoints his children. He doesn't. He didn't disappoint with Jesus. Jesus said, I'd raise again, I'd rise again in three days, and he did. And so you are made whole through Jesus. If you're struggling with something, you are promised to be made whole through Jesus. It says in Colossians 2.10, And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. As a follower of Jesus, you are not subject to the circumstances of the authorities of this world. It doesn't mean you don't obey those in authority over you. It means you're not subject to them. They can't control your destiny. Only God controls your destiny, but only if you give your destiny back to God. And you can only give it back to God through the promise of Jesus. So put your faith not in man, not in money, not in government, not in medicine. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. Jesus promised if you'd follow him, you could do good and stop doing bad. How many, how many times do we see people making New Year's resolutions that last about 37 days, right? You can only drive by in and out so many times before you stop and get one, a double-double. We all know that feeling. But the truth is, if you understand you're a spiritual being having a human experience and Jesus is the one that gives you the power and authority, you can stop doing bad and start doing good. It says, Galatians 5.1, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. What's the yoke of slavery? It's the part of you that wants to do bad. It is impossible to please this flesh. You know it. And the more money and, uh, and authority and power you have, the more trouble you can get into trying to please this flesh. If you don't believe me, try giving up sugar, processed sugar. I dare you. I double dare you. <laughs> Say, I will not have any processed sugar starting today. Nothing in my coffee. Not, look at your, your uh, only natural sugar from foods. Give it up, all of it. Don't touch a piece of candy. You know what's going to happen? I can tell you the symptoms. I've done it. <laughs> I have no problem with sugar. I quit every six months or so. <laughs> Here's what happens. First, you start getting the shakes because your body wants sugar. Then you start literally, you literally get flu-like symptoms. You'll think you got COVID again, but it wasn't COVID. You will literally get flu like Your body's saying, what are you doing? I want sugar. You will be jittery. You'll be cranky. Don't be around people that you love for a while. All because this body will never get enough. It'll never get enough. If you try to feed this body the satisfaction, you will live a life of misery. That's why we discipline this body. We tell this body how it's going to live. And how do you know? 
Because you are spiritual beings saved by Jesus to do good. And your body should be a reflection of the one that you represent. And so if you ever want to know how much power your body has, try sugar or try giving up caffeine. Caffeine, stay far away from your friends and family (laughs) for at least a week. Go check yourself into some rehab center to try to give up coffee. This is what he says in Romans 2.6. He will render to each one according to his works to those by the patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality. He will give eternal life, but for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. He's making it clear. By the way, did we just, because I hear the children, and we did, we did open up the uh, children's screaming room. If you want to use it, it's that door right there. Or any adults, if you feel like screaming, there's a door right there. You can go through there. I forgot because people have been using it. So what he's saying is, you through Christ have the ability to do good. Stop trying to do it on your own. I brought this cup that uh, one of our, my employees bought for me. It's called, I, I Can Fix It. I can fix it because I can't, (laughs) right? It reminds me when Rini thinks he can fix it all, he makes a bigger mess than he started. I can fix it. How many of us have tried to fix our car and not fixed it? (laughs) My beautiful redhead has got two new cars because I tried to fix the other ones myself. (laughs) It's a true story. I can't fix it, but Jesus can fix it. So if you're here today struggling with life, why don't you give it to Jesus? He died and resurrected so he could fix it for you. How about the the promise of freedom from fear and anxiety? Whoa, I'm telling you, I want you to hear me on this because you may be experiencing it. They're saying the repercussions of this global pandemic we went through is causing people now to begin to display their fear and anxiety because The constant isolation, the constant fear, the constant worry, the fear of losing your job, of not being together with people. We're now just seeing people out of nowhere losing it. But through Jesus, you don't have to have fear. You don't have to have anxiety. It says in 1 John 4, 18, For there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out. Who can give you perfect love? Amen? Who can give you perfect love? Jesus can give you perfect love. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he died for all the sins of humanity. He he gave himself for you out of a perfect, unconditional love. And he rose again to say, hey, I may have given my life for you so you can be restored to God, so you can be forgiven of your sins, but just make no doubt about it, I have also come to give you love to sustain you because I rose from the dead. I didn't die and stay dead. He rose up so he could be with you all day every day and give you perfect love for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love some of us think god is a god that is an angry old man ready to take his anger out on you and we talk about the fury of god the wrath of god but you don't understand what all that means is that god being perfect he is, the per- he is perfect love, perfect good. He is the light that lights up the universe. And if you have sinned in your life, you cannot be in the presence of God. And when you're not in the presence of your creator, you feel a distance and an anguish and a darkness. Darkness cannot abide where the light is. Light pierces the darkness. And so if you have not allowed Jesus Christ to step in to remove the sin of your life, you are separated and you do feel wrath and anguish because you're not connected to your creator. Some of you are here today and you are displaced from someone. The relationship is broken, maybe with someone you knew, someone you cared about, maybe with a family member or friend. You know the heartbreak of a broken relationship. It hurts. It hurts a lot. And when you restore that relationship, it feels wonderful, does it not? 
This is what happens with God. He's not an angry God trying to, trying to take wrath out on you. He desires to be close to you, but darkness cannot abide with light. So you must find a way to be righteous. How are you righteous? By accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, saying, I have, I have done wrong. Jesus goes, I know you did, and you can't fix yourself, so I died for you. All you got to do is say, I'm sorry I did those, those wrong things. Forgive me in the name of Jesus who died for me. And God says, you are forgiven. Come here, my child. Give you a hug. We're all good. Happy, happy. That's the way it's supposed to be. No fear, no anxiety, just an embrace of a loving God through the mediator his son. And then God becomes your fan forever. He becomes your fan forever. We all need a good fan. Romans 8, 28. We know that those who love God, to those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, it means God wants to do good things through you. God wants to do good things through you. Colossians 1, says, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Literally, hear me now. It's like you're cleansed through Jesus and suddenly you've been connected again to God. If you're here today struggling with a relationship with God, all that needs to happen is you allow Jesus to erase the things that are keeping you from his presence, and then you can return to your presence with your creator, and there's something special that happens. And what happens is that God, when you speak, God listens, and he, and he responds to you. They say that when we talk to God, it's called prayer. When God talks to us, we're insane. Right? That's what the world says. If you say, I'm talking to God, they go, okay, you're praying. But if you say, God has spoken to me, they go, yeah, you're weird. <laughs> because it is weird to those that are distant from God. It is kind of wacko. But if you are preserved and, and, and reconciled to God through Jesus, you can speak and you will hear him. It says, John 10, 27, Jesus says this, my sheep hear my voice. You're his sheep. He doesn't say, I hide myself from my sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice. There's an expectation. If you dare to call out to Jesus, he will answer you. He will call to you. Because he says, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. When you give your life to Jesus, nobody, nothing can take you away from the embrace of the loving God and the Son, Jesus. Where do you get that guarantee in the world? What relationship gives you that guarantee? What money gives you that guarantee? What doctor gives you that guarantee? Only God through Jesus guarantees you once you follow Jesus, it is eternal, it is forever. You will hear his voice. You will have direction finally in your life. I know what to do now. You will see things you didn't see before. You'll hear things you didn't hear before. You'll know what is right. You'll know what is wrong. And you'll do what is right. And you'll stop doing what is wrong. That is the promise of a resurrected Jesus. God listens to you. He responds. And he provides for you. God cares. He says in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. Everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be open. God has not closed the door to you. If you are here today, God has not closed the door to you. He has opened the door for you. All you've got to do is decide to walk through it. And most importantly, if I could have the worship team on stage with me, we are delivered from death to eternal life. We are delivered from death to eternal life. You know, they don't like to talk about this sometimes because... People get offended. You know, if you are a spiritual being and you live forever, where do you go when your body dies? And if there is a God, I'm going to ask you, are you right with God? you got to get right with God. It is clear in Scripture. It says in John 3, 36, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. No one likes to say that part of the Scripture, but I am. 
if you have come today, even if you were dragged here kicking and screaming, it is because God says, look, would you stop running from me? I'm not going to hurt you. Maybe you've been hurt. I'm not going to offend you. Maybe you've been offended. I'm not going to rob you. Maybe you've been robbed. I'm not going to tear you up. Others have torn you up. I am simply wanting a relationship with you. That's all I want. That's all I ever want. I made you. I breathe life into you. I have a destiny for you. I have a purpose for you. But I need you to receive the gift I gave you. My son. I gave you my son. I sent him for you. He, he walked without sin. He allowed himself to be beaten and tortured and tormented and ridiculed and spat upon. And he went on a cross and he died on that cross. And he stayed dead for three days. And even on the cross, I had to turn my eyes from him when your sin was on his shoulder. And he did all that so one day you could say, Jesus, thank you for that gift. Thank you, you rose again. Thank you, you forgive me for all the things I've ever done. And God, through your son, Let's be reconnected. That's it. That's the message. It's not painful. You didn't die hearing it. But it's necessary. You believe it. This is a promise given. John 3.16, you see it everywhere. Think about what it means for you today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have what? That's the promise for you. That's the promise for you who are watching at home. This is the promise for Easter, that Jesus did not stay dead, that he rose again, and he wants you to remember, I made you. The happiest you're ever going to be is if you choose to follow my son, Jesus. What do we, how do we do that? How do we get right with Jesus? We simply accept the gift of the death and resurrection of an innocent God-man named Jesus. We confess our sins to God, and he forgives us. And I know you may be with some friends or relatives, but I need you to take a moment to be courageous with me today. If you are here today, and you know that God is calling you back to be in his presence, and you know you just kind of gave the sidearm to Jesus, and maybe you've never even begun this walk with Jesus. Can I say to you, today, this Easter, in 2021, may it be the new beginning for you. May it be the new future for you. May it be where God says, I got you. I'll, I'll send you. I'll take care of you. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about relationships. Don't worry about sickness. Don't worry about your destiny. I got you. But first, I need you to come to me. And I'm going to ask you, so I can pray for you, if you would like to start that walk with Jesus today. If you're going to make that commitment, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you to do something and at home to let me know, Pastor, I'm choosing to walk with Jesus today. And that's you right now with our eyes open. Put your hand up so I can see you. I make, that's right. That's right. Come on now. Let's be courageous. Good. Let's do it. Let's get right with Jesus today. Who else? I want to start that. Good. Come on. Come on now. Forget everybody else in this room. This is about you and Jesus. Getting right with Jesus. Good. Who else? Come on. Come on now. Good. Be brave. Be brave. And we're going to pray together. We're going to pray before we dismiss today. You can put your hands down. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. We're going to pray it together because we've all done this. And then when we're done, before you leave, I'm going to ask you to visit our prayer team members because we don't do this alone. We walk this out together. Let's pray this prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, I accept Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. I ask you to forgive me for all the wrong I have done and restore me to God the way it should be and help me live life with you every day until I'm in your presence. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Say thank, you. thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And listen every morning, Monday through Friday at 747 a.m. as we go through the Bible together on Facebook Live. And share these videos with all your friends and family so others 
can receive the hope of Jesus.